Hello everyone, this is Serenis here, back in my fifth instalment of the Champion Free for All August season gameplays today, guys. I'm very excited to bring this one to you today, guys, because it's a regret uh, free for all. And that's the first time we've seen it in my uh, series, so I will be talking about the map strategy today for this map and uh, you know how to do well on regret and uh, talk a little bit about the spawns in this gameplay. So the first thing we want to talk about here is uh, what you can see on your screen, the player outlines. You can see a player on um, a rampart side of the map there, just uh, ahead of me. And uh, these, you know, Regret is based on the map, um, the famous Halo 2 map midship, and is basically very similar to True uh, Free For All. This area you're looking at now is uh, P side, where the plasma cars are spawned, and the opposing side is what we call Carbine, and uh, those areas, like, off of the Carbine, as you can see the player in front of me on the outline there, he is on, um, I think that's, uh, I think that's Red Rampart, I'm pretty sure, or, or Blue, I can't remember now, to be honest, which side is which, but... Um, yeah, he's on one of the rampart sides, and um, that's one of the uh, spawns on this map. So just to sort of uh, define what rampart actually means, it means that where that guy is currently. Sorry, that was blue rampart, and there's also a player that spawns on red rampart. So that's pretty important to uh, go over. So for this game, the spawns were um, in top mid where I spawned. Uh, two players on each, um, you know, rampart for blue and uh, red. And then uh, one player uh, was near OS at the bottom of the base, and there were two players that spawned on either base in this gameplay. So those were the spawns. So two players on the ramparts, respectively, two players on each base, so that accounts for four players. I was on my own in top mid, and then there was an extra player who was um, bottom of one of the bases near the overshield, who was closest to the overshield. So that's the way these spawns will work on Regret. They are very random on Regret, actually, as I'm going to discuss in a moment. Um, one of my other matches on Regret um, for this season, the spawns were very different, I'm going to come on to that in a minute. But the most com common things with Regret spawns is that there will usually be two players on each rampart, so if you spawn on a rampart side of the map, you need to be looking across to the other one because there probably will be a player there. Uh, but the way Regret spawns work is that two players will face off, most likely on the rampart, and there'll be one player on his own who's closest to OS, There'll be another player on his own who spawns away from everything, which is kind of like me in that in this gameplay. And um, there'll be you know two players that will sort of spawn um, in similar spots, you know, on the other side of the map. So that's kind of where these like spawns work out for regret. And this other match of regret that I played that you're going to see in a few episodes time, spawns were very different to what I just described. And these spawns were one player on a BR ramp for a particular base. So he's not like on top of the base anymore, he's just on the BR ramp, which is kind of a weird spawn. Uh, two players bottom mid for OS, uh, so two players exactly in bottom mid near the overshield. And then two players on the ramparts, so that's a common spawn from both of the games, so that's most likely to always happen. And then there was one player on the um, opposing base to the guy who was on the BR ramp on the other base. Uh, so there's two players on each base, one on the BR ramp, one on top for that game. Two players were in bottom mid for OS, and then two players on the rampart. So that's very different. As you can see, you know, um, Halo 5 free for all spawns can be very interchangeable on some particular maps, and uh, I definitely feel that was the case for Regret. And uh, you know, definitely that's something that you have to think about when you play this map. Uh, this this game today that you're watching was like one of my first played on my Onyx. I just completed my placements at this point. I'm starting to. Um, play my Onyx to champion matches, so these are officially now are like champion high matches since we got out of the placements. But in my placements, I definitely play a lot of you know really good people, you know like HCS Lee and that who were actually you know are actually champion free for all players. So the matches were still of you know champion high quality. I also played Adzi as another very good player as well. Um, but in this gameplay today, I'm playing Ivy Terror, who is a champion player. I'm also playing against uh, Curetta Rock, who has been a champion uh, free for all player in previous seasons. So I was up against some decent competition in this gameplay. And uh, right now, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, the general uh, way to play Regret or how I think to play Regret. I mean, it's not my best played map in FFA, but I think in this gameplay, I can talk about the strategy and how to play it. And um, I'm going to go through now and just talk about my sort of in-game decision making and the plays I made were good. So <coughs> weapons are spawned on this map as well guys, obviously Plasma Caster is the main sort of power weapon on this map which spawns on a um, time indicator so it'll only come up at that set time and you should definitely look to grab that. I definitely had a bit of a rough start in this gameplay and I feel that's partly because um, 
I didn't get the, you know, obviously I went for the overshield at the beginning not realising I wasn't the closest person to it and obviously not getting it. Um, so I should have realised that because I was top mid I should have gone for the people on the rampart because those are always uh, common spawns on regret so that was a mistake that I made. I haven't really played regret a lot in the June and July seasons if I'm honest so I wasn't well versed on this map at all. Um, kind of like... This gameplay that you're watching now is one of the first times I've played Regret in a long while, so obviously I was kind of like uh, learning as I was going through really um, to you know, play this Regret free for against good players. Um, but you know, I just felt to myself, you know, I'm just going to wait until the uh, next OS comes up, I'm going to try and get that because I really need to you know, claw my way back into this game and you know, try and get that power up. So that's exactly what I do here. That's a really nice way to stay alive uh, prior to that, you know, winning that out AR battle uh, bomb that phase. You know, now having the overshield, I can definitely make a, you know, sensible push for the caster. I'm quite surprised that no players actually went for this until I just grabbed it now because it obviously involved in fights, uh, respectively, because I saw a lot of um, action on the kill feed there. But it was a really nice play to actually notice that battle bomb mid that was going on and then steal that for like a double kill and now just sort of waiting for my time for someone to push red base. I wasn't actually AFK there, I was just waiting because I realised I'd killed two players and that they knew I'd be in the vicinity and I just wanted to see if people would rush back to red and of course they actually did so I was able to get another you know, uh, kill out of that and also find a guy here for a killing spree. So it's a really nice way to crawl my way back into this game you can see in free for all in Halo 5 free for all, how much a difference you know a power weapon and then you know power up can make. You can literally you know swing your way back into a game from like fourth or fifth place, wherever I was, into first just by having a really good you know run with the weapons and being able to you know pinch kills. It really is you know you're never fully like down and out in an FFA if you're like last or fifth place. You can still come back. There's always opportunity to come back in FFA. So you know just by literally playing smart and grabbing. Um, you know, these power weapons and power ups, you can definitely find your way back into the match. And that's a really nice place there to get that killing spree because I was in fifth or last, um, as I could see from the beginning. So that was a great way of actually coming back into this match. Really nice use of the plasma caster and the overshield. And you know, by the time I've got those kills, it's nearly time for the next OS. So I'm going to have to sell well for that and you know, try and get that off the next spawn. Um, so you know, just like keep an open mind about free for all. Always thinking about your next move. You can see the next plasma cast is starting to be timed down now. So that's definitely going to be uh, you know players are definitely going to want to grab that as well. So at this point, I'm um, looking to push uh, towards um, the important areas. Unfortunately, I do get outshot by a Coretta rock there. So that is unfortunate. Um, and obviously, that's going to slow my uh, you know my uh, plans down. But I think at this point, you know, to myself, I'll try and go for the overshield. Exactly what I do here, but Ivy Terra's uh, waiting for him, unfortunately, and um, I don't really notice him until the last minute. So all I can do is try and uh, you know, stay alive for the middle and try and uh, you know like wear down his overshield because uh, I don't want him getting loads of kills with that. So I'm just trying to take it off of him and uh, definitely have cut down the overshield there, so he can't really make as you know good pushes with that as he'd like. So that was a really nice play. I think instead of like throwing a nade there in that lift because. That was kind of a pointless nade in my opinion, because that nade was never going to kill anybody. Um, I think I would have waited to keep my splinter and then trying to, you know, throw at that guy that was chasing me for the kill there. But um, yeah, nice play to stay alive, nice play to weaken the OS. It was a bit of a shame that, um, you know, I couldn't get that again because I was the last player to have had it. So I should have really been a bit more clinical, uh, you know, thought about setting up that sort of better. At this point, I'm just, you know, finding players bottom mid and looking to sort of slay more people bottom mid and uh, you notice what I did there as well is something in FFA is really important when you play FFA actually when you finish off kills like that in a particular area of the map you notice immediately I started crouching and the reason I did that is because whenever you play Halo 5 free for all a lot of people just go for noise on the map where they can hear gunfire so whenever you've been, you know, a really nice play to get this triple right here, and I really wanted this overkill, but I'm gonna settle for the um, out BR sort of reversal <laughs> um, out shoot there when the guy had a pistol and I was weak, so that was a really nice bit of play. Um, as I was saying though, in Halo 5 free for all, when you get kills of that nature, 
you always want to try and crouch in because like a lot of players when they play Hill of Five free for all go for noise and they will just rush to the area that they heard gunfire in. So um, when you ever you get kills like that and a good you know flow of kills, it's much better to like crouch in because players will you know rush into that area and try and spot you know, any, like, you know, weak people they can clear up, so um, definitely be aware of that, you know, definitely be aware of the fact that, um, you know, if you are really got a tight game as well with someone in FFA that's really close, um, be careful of that, you know, in, in, like, luring a lot of people in, because if you don't end up clearing them up and get them weak and then that guy comes in, he's just going to get a load, you know, a good source of flow of kills, so you do have to be really careful of that in FFA. At this point, you know, it's a really nice play to set up really neatly for the OS, obviously fighting off the players that were around it and obviously shooting them to keep them back. Unfortunately, like, really good play to get this OS. Um, I would have liked to have seen myself do a bit more of it there, but that player at bottom mid, I kind of had to spend a bit more extra time shooting him than I would have liked and uh, don't really get much use out of my overshield, but... I mean, it stopped any other player from grabbing it, and also I get, you know, I got one kill out of it, so you could say that that was a good use of the OS, and, you know, obviously still having a bit of a lead here, which I think has actually been tied now, I managed to take one kill lead there, I think. Um, I'm really unfortunate not to get that double kill right there, maybe if I put an extra BR shot I might have traded with that guy, but... Um, you know, really nice plays to have got the last OS to, you know, slow, slow the game down and, uh not give any particular player an advantage. This was a really nice duel here because uh, that was really a duel I needed to win because that was a player that was isolated from everyone else and uh, you know that was literally a 1v1 battle there that I had to win. And as you can see I did get myself an extra kill and uh, trying to escape from that battle I was getting shot from someone in behind and then I was cleared up by a player who it was in top mid at that time. And luckily for me, he was one of the players in last place, so uh, my rivals in this gameplay in terms of winning the match didn't get any extra kills from that. That was a really nice nade right there on Coretta Rock to spot him uh, coming up the P ramp. And then I, I noticed the guy in top mid, and I was able to finish him off as well from the match winner. So guys, I really hope you enjoyed this regret free-for-all where I talked a little bit about you know, the spawns on the map, um, how to you know uh, do really well with Plasma Caster, um, how to sort of, you know, uh, different free-for-all strategies you can use as you build your way to first place. I really hope this Regret Free-for-all was useful. I do have another one coming up in the next few episodes. But anyway, guys, this was Serenis, and I really hope you enjoyed my fifth installment of Champion Free-for-all with Season Gameplays. I'll see you next time.